So I've been getting a lot of requests lately asking how some of the gear that I've been using this year has been holding up. And with us now being in the middle of fall here in the Northeast, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to share with all of you how some of that gear has been working for me this year and holding up. Now let's get into some of that gear, footwear and clothing that I've been using for 2022. So to kick things off, we have the Ultra Lone Peak 6. Now those of you that follow my channel or have seen me out on the trails or have come out on a backpacking trip with me know that the Lone Peaks have been my favorite shoe and my go-to for the last several years now. And with the current Lone Peak 6, I find this shoe to be very similar to the Lone Peak 4. And that shoe I found to be fantastic. So with the Lone Peak 6, I find it to be very spacious, yet snug in the areas where I need it. Don't have a lot of pressure inside of the shoe. Very comfortable doing 25 plus mile days in. And with the anatomically correct foot shape of this shoe, it also works really well with my Njinji socks that I wear all of the time. Zero drop is something that just works really well for me and my body mechanics. And I find this shoe to be very, very comfortable. Breathes really well. And in the wet conditions I've experienced with the shoe, I found them to dry very quickly. So far, I have 423 miles in these shoes along trails like the Long Trail in Vermont, up in the White Mountains in New Hampshire, on the New England National Scenic Trail, and a whole bunch of other shorter long distance trails. And I like this shoe so much that I ended up picking up another pair. So that way when these wear out, I'll have another brand new pair ready to go to give me many more miles. If this shoe is to compare to the Lone Peak 4s, I'm expecting to get over 600 miles with the shoe before I need to replace them. The Lone Peak 4, I think I had about 624 miles in them before I had to replace them. And unlike the Lone Peak 4, I haven't had any premature pack out with the midsole, so that's been excellent. The Ultra Ego has been very responsive, very comfortable underfoot, good rock protection. Durability hasn't been an issue for the most part. I did have the toe cap start to peel on my left shoe, but I quickly addressed it and put a little shoe goo over it and I haven't had any issues since. And the traction with the Lone Peak has been what you'd come to expect with the Lone Peak. So this has been great on roots and rocks, sheds mud really well, dry conditions, excellent on wet terrain traction is pretty good but it's very difficult to compare something like this to a vibram outsole that you would get with a different shoe still i haven't had any major slipping in this shoe and i haven't experienced that in the past either i really love the lower stack height on this compared to a lot of the thicker cushion shoes that are out there shoes very flexible and i love that ground feel and that deeper connection to the trails that i'm hiking on that I get with this shoe. Another shoe that I've been wearing quite a bit on the trail this year, though not as much as the Lone Peaks, have been the Ultra Olympus 5. I have about 290 miles on this shoe and I find it to be pretty good. Vibra Mega Grip outsole has been excellent at shedding mud, great traction in wet terrain, really grippy on roots and rocks. It's also worked really well in mountainous terrain like the White Mountains in New Hampshire and the Adirondacks in New York. The shoe dries pretty well and it breathes pretty well, though not as well 
well as the Lone Peaks in my experience, and not as well as the previous version of the shoe, the Ultra Olympus 4. I do really love the heel pull tab and the beefed up cushioning on the inside to help with a more secure heel lock. The heel lock wasn't something that I had major issues with with the Olympus 4, but I do find the shoe to be a little bit more snug and still form fitting similarly to the Lone Peaks. Uh, my reason for having lower mileage in this shoe is just because I prefer great ground feel. Despite my lower mileage in this shoe, I do really enjoy wearing it on hard packed terrain or if I'm really pushing big mileage days and I have a little bit more weight in my pack or if I have some pavement involved on the long distance trail that I'm hiking. The cushion definitely helps with that. It's very soft, very responsive, but I generally prefer having more of that ground feel when I'm out hiking. So despite this being a really good shoe, I still prefer the Lone Peaks to it. That said, in my video last year, I had mentioned that I was wearing the Olympus 4 and they just weren't working well for me because of that ground feel. Well, I still ended up wearing them quite a bit because I wanted to see how they would perform and how long they would last. And I got close to a thousand miles with that shoe. And I am looking forward to getting more mileage in with this shoe just to see how it holds up. For the Olympus, overall, I do prefer the Olympus 4. And I did end up purchasing another pair of them on clearance once these came out. So that way I have a pair once these wear out. The other shoe that I've been wearing quite a bit this year is the Ultra Mont Blanc. Despite wearing this quite a bit, I do also have lower mileage in it. I believe I'm around 253 miles with this shoe so far. The shoe is definitely more race oriented, but I've worn it on several backpacking trips and I found it to be pretty comfortable. No issues with the heel lock with the shoe for me. And I do find it to be a little bit lighter, a little more nimble. Traction on the shoe is pretty comparable to the Vibra Mega Grip, though not as good as the Vibra Mega Grip. Still grips well on wet terrain and also sheds mud pretty well. The whole upper breathes well when the shoe is dry, but when it gets wet, it does take a little bit longer to dry compared to the Olympus and the Lone Peak in my experience. And the shoe does feel a little more snug overall than the Olympus and the Lone Peaks. And that's due to the standard fit compared to the wider original fit. So I'll be wearing this when I really want to go fast for my trail runs or if I'm trying to set an FKT or something. The Ultra Ego Max is very plush and bouncy, very responsive. And this shoe feels less clunky than the Ultra Olympus. But for backpacking, I'm going to be sticking with my Lone Peaks. And I have also been wearing the Ultra Superior 5s a lot this year when I haven't been wearing the Lone Peaks. Next up is a tent that I've been using this year. This is the Z-Pax Plex Solo. I have about 30 nights in this tent. I really wanted to take it out in varying conditions and see how it performed. I really love how it handled in strong winds. I even took it out in a late winter snowstorm earlier this year and it shed snow and worked really well. It also works really well in heavy rain. Very simple, very quick and easy to set up, pretty spacious and it's going to be one of the lightest tents on the market. For trips when a tent might be more necessary, this is definitely going to be one of my go-tos in the future and I really look forward to continuing to use it. But as I mentioned in my video last year going over some gear updates, I've been kind of shying away from tents and also hammocks and I've been becoming more of a tarp hiker. So I really love the versatility, the lightweight, the packability of a tarp. And in the video last year, I think I showed the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Square Tarp. I'm still using that to this day, but I've also been using what has become one of my favorite tarps. And this is the 7x9 Z-Packs 
Dyneema composite fabric tarp. I can't even tell you how many nights I have under this tarp. I've used it up in Vermont, I've used it up in New Hampshire, I've used it up in Maine, used it on the AT. It's held up really well. I can set this up to address any type of conditions that I'm going to be experiencing handled wind really well. It's handled heavy rains really well. One of my favorite pieces of gear that I own and it's been fantastic. I do have a new tarp in the works that I'm really excited to share with all of you. It's made out of a completely different fabric and I'm looking forward to getting that tarp out on the trail, testing it out in varying conditions, and also possibly using it in the winter time when the location and the conditions allow. So subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell because I will have a first look video coming up on this channel in the next couple of weeks. I'm really looking forward to sharing that video with all of you. Another piece of gear that I promised I would share a follow-up on for all of you is the Enlightened Equipment Horrid Apex Jacket. I love this jacket so much that I ended up picking up the Torrid Apex Pullover. This jacket has gotten me through some really cold nights where it's been well below zero. So I used this jacket all last winter. I've also used it in the spring and fall as just kind of a warm layer in the mornings when it's a bit cooler and when it's cooler at night around camp. I've also used it as part of my sleep system for nights when I felt a little bit cooler if I was just using my tarp. Jacket is very warm, very compressible. Having that synthetic insulation, it works really well in wet and humid humid environments like I'm out in quite frequently. It does dry quick and it's also nice and light. This jacket has replaced my Mountain Hardware Ghost Whisperer and my Patagonia Micro Puff. So I've been really happy with it. I've been happy with the full zip and I am looking forward to using the pullover a lot more this year when I'm not using the full zip jacket. Durability has been great. I haven't had any issues with uh, insulation, leaving the jacket or any pinholes or any fabric issues. The 10 denier has worked really well for the outer and the seven denier for the inner. Overall, just a fantastic jacket. And to round things out for this video, I also also have two packs that I wanted to follow up with all of you on. First, the Palante Joey V3. This pack I have around 400 miles in. It's been excellent. Very comfortable, very form-fitting. I do love the Ultra Dyneema mesh. It is very solid. I haven't had any issues with durability or abrasions or holes or anything. I love the two-tone colorway with the eggplant grid stop and the powder blue nylon. Very classy looking. And this pack has been great carries weight really well. I will say that the V2 Joey is still my favorite compared to this one. I still prefer the, the mesh pockets all around the entire pack, having a little bit more stretch to it. But aside from that, this pack feels very similar to the Joey V2. And I find the Joey pack to work really well for me. This is one of the most comfortable packs I've ever owned. And for trips where the Joey might not be the best option, the V2 for me most likely will. And this is another one of my favorite packs. I just really love the Palante packs. They feel very comfortable for me and they work really well for the type of hiker that I am. This uses the new Ultra 200 fabric and it's held up really well. I have over a thousand miles in this pack. The abrasion resistance and durability on this fabric has been excellent. So the waterproofness is very similar to what you get with Dyneema composite fabric. Had this out in heavy rains and I haven't had any issues with my gear getting soaked inside of it. I've used this pack out on winter backpacking trips. I love the little stake pocket on the outside and the ultra mesh works really well for this pack. And I think that's just because it's only the outer front pocket. And this pack is a little bit bigger than the Joey packs. So I do have 
a little bit more room to just shove things in there if I want. No issues with the mesh bottom pocket for the durability either. And I really like the ultra bottle pockets. This pack feels like an extension of my body. It's very comfortable, though slightly not as comfortable as the Joey is for me, but still very form fitting. And I do love having the straps in the bottom of the bottle pockets to secure around my waist when I am carrying heavier pack weights. I've carried upwards of 25 pounds with this pack and it's worked really well. The ultra material has been excellent and I'm really excited to see a lot of other small cottage manufacturers and pack makers using this material to make packs and other gear. I definitely see this becoming enhanced in the future and I can't wait to see where it brings all of us. So there you have it. That's some of the gear, footwear, and clothing that I've been using throughout all of 2022 and for some of it even into the winter last year. Have any of you used any of the items that I went over in this video? Leave your experience in a comment below. I'd love to hear how things have been working out for you. And if you have any questions on anything that I went over in this video, please feel free to leave those in a comment below as well. Or you can contact me at any time at reachyoursummit.net. I hope you all found this video helpful and if you found any value in this video please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel because I'm always adding new content to it and I have a lot of exciting videos coming up to share with all of you and I can't wait to do that. I want to thank you for your time, thank you for watching, and thank you for all of your subscriptions. I greatly appreciate all of you and until the next one, see you on the trail.